Welcome back to another episode of Flawless Play and Garage, where today we are doing an update on this, my 2002 Cadillac Escalade, which I have <laughs> rebuilt the engine on several times, not very successfully. And let me say, I have been beset on all sides by nothing but requests for updates on this car. Everywhere I go, thousands of people flock around me and ask, what's the deal with the Escalade? Did, the, did it work? Is the engine okay? What's going on? And when I say thousands, I mean, I think there, I think maybe three people have asked me that, but we're going to try to address that today. And you know what? We're going to find out together because frankly, I don't really know how it's doing either. Stick around. But before we get started today, I've got to tell you about today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Anxiety. Anxiety is that feeling you get in the pit of your stomach when you read the oil analysis report from Blackstone Labs. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been like maybe six months since I did the second, third, fourth, however you want to count it, engine rebuild on this vehicle and if you haven't seen those videos you might get a kick out of them if you enjoy watching someone struggle and fail through numerous engine rebuilds uh, you can check out those links above but it's taken me roughly those six months to get 1500 or so miles on this engine and feel like okay it's it's been long enough that uh, it's worth doing another look and seeing how things are doing on the break-in I've done quite a bit of tuning on it in that amount of time I've got an HP tuners device now of my own and through that process i've gotten you know a pretty conservative timing map so actually it runs well on even 87 octane on regular um, as well as on 91 where i've got a little bit more aggressive map in it and uh, it makes more power than it did before certainly i've been relatively happy with that truck norris cam setup it sounds great at idle i've got a really conservative tune even at idle i don't have a lot of like over speed under speed trying to create a bunch of chop but you can tell at idle that this is not a stock cam and it, it sounds good kind of like it and yeah i mean it runs good runs smooth um, if i get a chance here i'll kind of wind it out a little bit so you can hear it hopefully if it's coming through the microphone at all but overall it's been fine critically of course oil pressure has basically been fine i've had no issues there it maintains 40 psi at idle and it climbs with rpm reasonably well um, you know i don't spin this thing to six grand really ever uh, but at the higher RPMs, it gets 50, 60 PSI uh, without any seeming issues. So overall, I think it's been working fine. I recently did an oil change on it because I had two fuel pump failures <laughs> where I just out of the blue, it seemed like the fuel pump quit. This fuel pump's only like a year and a half old, but uh, it seemed to quit on me. And I dropped the tank. The fuel pump seemed really kind of sputtery. It would run on the ground. I'd hook the harness up to it and just kind of keyed it to see if the pump would run. And it would run, but just not a lot of flow out of it. Put in a Walbro unit. Everything tested out great on the ground. Bench tested or, you know, ground tested just fine. I put the tank back up into the truck. Let it fire right up again. Everything ran great. Let it sit for a few days because I wasn't driving it. Uh, went back out to fire it up and nothing. No fuel. No idea what was going on with it. Dropped the tank again. And a previous mechanic that had done some work replacing the fuel pump like a year and a half ago had told me that he had trouble uh, with the ground wire. And so he had spliced in a new ground wire. And in fact, all of the pump wires had been spliced. He used the nice uh, adhesive style splices where you melt them down and they keep all the water and junk out of the connection. It all looked really good, but I figured it had to be some kind of electrical issue. Hopefully you got to hear that merge. It sounds pretty good and makes nice power. But I figured there had to be something wrong with the electric connection, so uh, I redid all the splices, and since then, no issues. So there must have been something going on in the wiring harness there. But during that process, while I had the thing up on jack stands, I decided, okay, I'm just gonna change the oil too. It's about that time. Dumped it out, new oil and filter. Partway through that drain process, I captured a sample to send to Blackstone, sent that to Blackstone as kind of a check-in, and here's those results. So 
I'll put them here in the video. The iron levels were high, which, okay, break in, you know, makes sense. You're going to have iron from the rings and other wear-in metals. It's going to happen. That seems okay. Less okay, less encouraging, was the other metals present, specifically copper. You guys tell me, but I cannot think of any good reason to have high levels of copper during break-in because the copper is not even the top layer of the bearings. The copper is like after you've worn through the lead and tin and those other metals that are the first layer of the bearing. By the time you get into the copper and you have high copper levels in the oil, that seems like a bad thing. And Blackstone asked me like, well, how did it look visually? Well, like an idiot, I didn't really do a visual inspection. I didn't keep uh, a good sample of it to inspect visually, and I didn't really check it in the pan when I, when I drained it. And by the time it's down inside my drain pan, it's, it's not going to be meaningful because, you know, I've had a lot of very dirty oil in that pan. So doing a visual inspection after that point is not going to do any good. Of course, also, in the weeks that it took to get the results back from Blackstone, I had thrown away the filter, so I couldn't even cut open the filter to check it. So another flawless plan gone awry there. Not a great move on my part. But, um, yeah, I think now, you know, Blackstone's comments you can read here were a little bit ambivalent. I think the only way to really have confidence is going to be a visual inspection of these bearings. So I think that's what we're going to do today. I'm not sure this is the right way to do this, heaven forbid I read a manual, but what I decided to do was drop the front differential down, just not completely out so I didn't have to disconnect the steering, so that way I could get the oil pan shimmied back down and out. Okay, this oil only has maybe 200 miles on it. I see things I'm not crazy about though. I don't know if you can see that on camera. There's definitely fine particles in there. I don't know if you can see like the marbling in the fluid. It's not large pieces, but there's metal in it for sure. Let's get the oil pan down and See what we can see. Nothing causes flashbacks from three years ago, like laying on my back underneath the truck I ran myself over with. Yeah, notice I'm using jack stands and wheel chocks this time. First of all, let me just say how excited I am to be out here in late April, spending my Saturday on my back in the driveway when it's 30 degrees with a 30 mile an hour wind and forecast to be blowing snow. Thanks, Nebraska. Anyway, let's take a look at how bad this rod bearing is. I think this is mostly good news. So uh, the first time through when it lost oil pressure and spun all the bearings, uh, they were, you know, really, really bad. And with the copper in the oil, I was concerned that I would see some wear through the, you know, through the bearing shell um, and down into the copper. And I really don't. Um, I think that's actually pretty minimal wear kind of like you would expect to see on a relatively fresh motor like we've got you know some marks in it nothing that you can feel um, they're way too fine for that and the crank itself looks good too yeah i think that's kind of focused you can kind of see that anyway i think maybe we're in okay shape i think we're going to call it okay and we're going to keep running it and probably do some more oil analysis in the future Kind of keep an eye on things but i think at least i'm going to avoid panicking for now okay so after a pretty happy inspection of the bearings as i was putting things back together i decided to also make sure and clean out the oil pickup tube again and guess what i found fibrous material again there's a little bit of like sealant here as well which doesn't bother me you're always going to have a little bit of sealant um, it kind of makes its way down there but this fibrous stuff is much less happy. Now, both of you who've watched the previous videos, and thanks guys, <laughs> will remember that the first time I had to do this engine rebuild again when it lost oil pressure, I found a ton 
of this fibrous material crap in the oil pickup tube, which clearly had clogged the oil pickup tube and starved it for oil, spun all the bearings on the bottom end. Somehow, now my theory at the time was that I had, you know, used these red uh, towels to wipe it down and then had wiped down with some other kind of more lint-free stuff. And that some of the, the individual fibers from those red towels had survived. It's not what this looks like. This looks like actual, you know, like blue shop towel material that's still coming out of the engine. Also, this means somehow that material has survived my first clean out of the engine, the machine shop's clean out of the engine after they bored it and then hot tanked it, and my subsequent very, <laughs> I thought, very meticulous clean out of the engine. I think there's still a little bit of this material in there. Far, now, as far as I can tell, bearings are in good shape still. I still have good oil pressure. And a big part of my reason for doing this right now, other than the, you know, not fantastic report from Blackstone, was because I have a 2,400 mile road trip coming up for a family vacation here in a couple of weeks. And I needed to decide whether we're gonna drive the Escalade or spend a grand trying to rent something or what. I still have that decision to make. I think I'm gonna roll the dice and send it though. I, I'm pretty, pretty sure that the engine's okay, even though it's still spitting out a small amount. And this is far less than I pulled out of it the first time there must still be a small amount of this material in an oil galley somewhere. And I know maybe you guys will, will throw something in the comments I won't have thought of, but man, I pulled all the plugs, I ran bore brushes through everything, I went through every cross drill on the crank, uh, you know, all the bearing uh, passages that feed into the backside of the bearings. I thought I got everything, but evidence is against me on that. So, I think it's okay for now, but I'm going to obviously keep a pretty close eye on it, and we'll find out how this trip goes. Wish me luck. Thanks for watching. See you next time.